That's true, because I spend, even to this day, I make my own bread and make my own bone broth and make my own sauerkraut and, you know, make my own herbal extracts. And, you know, I, I spend a lot of time in the kitchen, food processing, etc. So just suffice to say, I'm very interested in food and also in, in medicine. And one of the things I learned, and, and this is, I think, one of the central questions that anybody needs to ask themselves about health is, is are modern Americans in the best health of anybody who's ever lived? Not and, even close. <laughs> yeah. So, mo- you know, well, you say that, and, and, and uh, I agree with that, but, you know, the interesting thing is modern doctors would vehemently disagree with you. They say we're the healthiest people have ever been. Uh, that's one of the hallmarks of medical education, that because of modern medicine, people live longer on a healthier and less disease than anybody who's ever lived. And I think that's completely wrong. So, And that's basically what Weston Price found, was that there are lots of people out there who live long, healthy, disease-free lives much better in a way that than modern humans, you know, Western Americans, it's not even close as far as their disease incidence and their disability and, you know, cancer rates, autoimmune, you name it, we have it, they didn't have it. So because of that, then I tried to study, well, what did they do? Because I don't think it's genetic. There may be a some component of that, but that's not the answer. It's really how they lived. And then I, you know, I lived in, in a traditional African culture for a while and got a firsthand view of it and then have studied it pretty extensively for almost 40 years. And one of the things I figured out, and I, of course, I didn't figure this out myself, really, but is that the number of plants and animals that traditional people eat is far more than modern Americans. So... For instance, the native Californians ate approximately 110 different plants per per year. There's a native there's a group in in Africa, sort of a hunter gatherer group, where they eat, eat between three and four hundred different plants and animals per year. Sometimes up to 40 to 50 per day. Wow. And modern Americans eat between 20 and 40 per year, and about six per day. And that's like tomatoes because ketchup and French fries, that's potatoes, corn, wheat, beef, and iceberg lettuce. That's about it. Um, So that to me was, you know, there's a lot of evidence on that, you know, that produces health from a number of different standpoints, phytonutrients, um, diversity creates diverse microbiome, a, a whole lot of different reasons why eating diversity in the diet is a good thing for you. It's like you get the the whole pharmacy of nature instead of just a few things, and then you need the pharmacy from the pharmaceutical companies. And the other thing I, I, I quickly learned was that a lot of these plants were either wild plants, which tend to have more concentrated nutrients, or perennial plants, which means plants that live more than one year. You know, so kale and tomatoes and eggplant, those are annual plants. And I don't, it's not that I have anything against eating annual plants because I don't, and I eat them, you know, basically every day. But there was always at least, you know, a certain percentage, sometimes up to half or more, were perennial and wild vegetables. And so being the foodie that I am, I decided to set out to get wild and perennial vegetables in my diet. And tried to do that for, you know, 20-some years. And it was pretty difficult because you can't go to the farmer's market. They don't sell them in stores. There was really no source of perennial and wild vegetables, which is ironic for people who are eating what they say is a paleo or a traditional or ancestral diet. They never eat any of the vegetables that were eaten by paleo or traditional or ancestral people. So that's a little weird. Um, So, you know, that led me to, you know, start gardening more and growing tree collards and 
ashitaba and janura, these are perennial vegetables. And so I got to the point where I could do it, but basically none of my patients could do it, which, I mean, fair enough, but that didn't seem right to me. 